evening. Good evening. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Beautiful day God's gave us. Amen. Amen. As always, we ask to extend your prayers tonight. But if you find your place, Matthew chapter 25, I want to start reading in the 14th verse. Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then, that, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest, not, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you would to bow your heads. Father, again, we thank you for your precious word. And yes. Lord, once again, we just ask you to take me out of the way. Yes. Lord, uh, yes. give us the words that need said. And Lord, let yes. the message go out the way it needs to go out, Father. Yes. Lord, again, we thank you. We praise you. And we ask these things in Christ's name. And amen. 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 The expectation of a faithful servant. The expectation of a faithful servant. Uh, it said that uh, th this man had uh, called his servants together. He had gave them their assignments and said that he went on a, a journey. Okay. And to one he gave five talents. To another he gave two talents. To another he gave one talent. And folks, for everybody that says, well, all Christians ought to be the same, no. No, that's right. No, okay. Some he gives uh, yeah. five, some he gives two, that's right. some he gives one, yes. okay. But folks, the thing is, there is an expectation yes. for the faithful servant, Mary, regardless of how much he gives that's us. Right. There's an expectation that when he comes back, Glenna, he wants to see something resulting from that okay and it said that uh, after a long time do you notice what it said after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them 
folks, listen, it's been over 2,000 years yeah. since he went back to the Father. That's right. But reckoning day is coming. Amen. Amen. Reckoning day is coming. And we're going to see whether we're faithful or not. Right. We're going to see whether we've met expectations or not. And folks, did you notice that they all had to give an account? They all had to give, there are those that would have said, well, he only needed to, to check on the one that had the most responsibility. Well, okay. Well, what about the one that had some responsibility? Yes. The one that had two. What about the one that just had one? Okay. He was most likely the one that was going to slack off on the job. Yeah. Folks, listen, if you've worked anywhere, it's the one that don't have a lot of responsibility that you got to stay after. Yeah. Because... They look and say, well, what's the use? I'm not important. <laughs> but he come back and he reckoned with them all. And folks, listen, God is going to reckon with each one of us. Amen. He's going to reckon with each one of us. Uh, Romans 14, around verse 11, I think. He says, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then all of us are to give an account of ourselves to God. That's right. Amen. Folks, listen. Every one of us will give an account to God of what we've done. Yeah. Okay? Uh, the one with uh, five, he come and said, Listen, Lord, I have took your five and I've gained five more. Yeah. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. The one with two said, Listen, I have took your two and I've gained two more. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Right. Folks, listen. The commendation was the same for the one with five as the one with two. Yes, that's right. Listen, folks. Uh, some of us have served God for a long time. Okay? But guess what? The commendation is going to be the same as for those that have served Him that's right. for a year. Yes. Okay? Have you been faithful over what I have gave you? Amen. Have you been faithful over what I have gave you? And for the one that... that had, had the most he said you know what listen i've i've did what i've took what you gave me and i've doubled it folks listen you know how many people have took what god has gave them and becky they're going to be owing him at judgment yeah yeah amen they're going to be owing him at, folks yeah. that's sad yes if you would be owing the lord at judgment and that's what he told the one said listen you haven't did anything at the least, you could have put it in the bank and I would have got interest That's over right, that. Amen. But you produced nothing. Right. Folks, there are a lot of people, they produce nothing. Yeah, true. They produce nothing. And listen, a faithful servant is expected to produce something. Yes. A faithful servant is expected to produce something. And you've got to have faith to be a good servant. You gotta have faith to be a good servant. Uh, Hebrews eleven six says, "For without faith it is impossible to please him. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, yes. and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him." Folks, listen. If you're going to please God, you've got to be faithful. Amen. Okay, that's not an option. That's right. It's not multiple choice. It's not. Well, I'm faithful most of the time. Folks, how would you like it if the pastor was faithful most of the time? Right. That's right. That's right. Bless you, Lord. Orly, I'd like to ask a lot of these people, <laughs> would you be well pleased if I said, I'll try and make it? I'll try and make it to the hospital. I'll try and make it to come see you. I'll try and make it to come visit the, the lost. Okay? But folks... You can't just be faithful when you feel like it. Right. That's right. You can't just be faithful over this, but not that. Okay? A faithful servant is faithful, period. Right. With whatever he's called to do. Okay? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Okay? Without faith, it is possible to please him. Okay? 1 Corinthians 4 2. He says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Folks, you know what a steward is? That's someone who's been given something by someone else to take care of. That's right. 
That's someone who's been given something else to take care of. And it says it's required that a steward be found faithful. Listen, you wouldn't put your money in the bank if you knew they were all crooks and swindled you, right? That's right. That's right. Why would you expect Christ to give his trust to people, Bill, that aren't going to be faithful? Right. Amen. Why would he give uh, talents to those that aren't going to use them? Folks, it's required that a man be found faithful. Right. It's required that a woman be found faithful. That's right. Amen. Okay? But we have to be faithful to what he's gave us to do. And, and here's the thing. Listen, the master wants to take pleasure in his servants. The master wants to take pleasure in his servants. You notice what he told the first two? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. <laughs> Folks, you know what makes God happy? When you listen, yeah, that's right. when you Amen. obey, that's right. Amen. That's what makes God happy. Yeah. Okay. These first two servants, they obeyed. Yes. And He said, "Enter into the joy of thy Lord, folks." The Master wants to take pleasure in the servants. The Master wants to take pleasure in the servants. Uh, John fifteen, around verse ten, I believe. He says, "If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love." even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So Glenna, that's what he says. He says, listen, the Master wants to take pleasure yeah. in His servants. Right. Okay? He wants us to produce fruit. Yes. He wants to be able to have joy in his servants. That you know what? That he can trust them. Yeah. Right. Folks, listen, there are a lot of people that I'll just be blunt, Mike, I wouldn't trust them. Yeah. I wouldn't bother asking them to pray for me because mm -hmm. it wouldn't go any higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, amen or out. Bless you more. <laughs> Folks, listen, you only put trust in people yes. that have earned it. You've only put trust in people that have shown that, guess what? They can do the job that they've been assigned. These first two, he said, listen, enter into the joy of thy Lord. Uh, on down in verse 16 in that John chapter 15. He says, ye have not chosen me, yeah. but I have chosen you Amen. and ordained you yes. that ye should go and, and bring forth fruit. Okay. Listen, folks, the master picked you for a reason. Yeah, sure. He picked you for a reason, okay? He had a specific job just for you to do. Right. He had a specific job just for you to do. And listen, he didn't tell these three servants they all had the same job. Right, right. This one, okay, listen, I'm giving you five. This other one, I'm going to give you two. This other one, I'm going to give you one. Folks, uh, that's the sad thing. There are people that they've been given one, Sandy, and they can't even keep that. If you can't even keep right. one, how are you going to handle multiple? That's right. How are you going to handle multiple? <coughs> and, and, folks, it's not how much you do. It's how faithful Amen. you are to what he's called you to do. Amen. It's how faithful you are to, to what he's called you to do. Again, uh, Luke 16, around verse 10 says, he that is faithful in the least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. Listen, folks, you can't cherry pick and say, well, listen, I'm, I'm pretty faithful about this, right, right. but I'm not pretty faithful about that. Bless the Lord. Folks, you're either faithful yeah. or Amen. you're not. Amen. You're either just or you're not. Right. You're either here or you're not. Okay, and if you're not uh, doing what the master is called, then guess what? He's not going to be pleased when he comes back. He's not going to yes. be pleased That's when right. he comes back. Okay, but he gives us all something to do. He gives us all talents. Okay, yeah. you say I don't have any talent. Can you come and be faithful? Yeah, it's right. Can you be here when church is going on? Right. Listen, folks, if you can do that, then guess what? 
He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Listen, there are a lot of people that have come to this church, Will, in the 30 years that I was here, and I'm sure in the 20 or so more that you was here That's before right. I come, that they didn't do any more than just come mm -hmm. and sit and be faithful Amen. and pray for the service. Amen. And you know what? They entered into heaven with yes. the same That's commendation right. as given here. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Listen, folks, everybody isn't called to preach. That's right. Everybody isn't called to teach. Right. Everybody isn't called to sing or right. to do this or do that. But what he's called you to do, be faithful to Amen. Him. Be faithful to him. Amen. And there are those that will say, well, what has he called me to do, Doug? Okay. 1 Timothy 4, 13. He says, till I come... Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, folks, listen. If you say, God hasn't gave me any other talents, then guess what? Yeah. He's gave you this to do. Right. To read his word, to exhort. And what does exhort mean? Go to church. <laughs> to doctrine. Yeah. To set an example for the world. Okay? Listen, if that's the only thing that you have to do, those are three things that God's called us to do. Okay? Till I come. Listen, the master, it says that he was going a long time. Mike, again, Christ has been going a long time, but he's coming back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and he's going to reckon with the servants that's right. when Amen. he comes back. And what Paul tells Timothy is the same thing that God tells us. Listen. Till I come back, read my word, mm -hmm. go to my house, live as I lived. Yeah. Folks, if you can do that, then guess what? You've got a talent. Yeah. Because right. there's a lot of people that can't do that, Connie. Yeah. It's not that they can't do it, it's that they won't do it. Yeah. Let's just be honest here. Okay. Right. Folks, listen, there's nobody that, that can't be a Christian. Yeah. They won't be. That's right. Amen. Amen. Not that you can't, that you won't. That's right. Okay? There's a difference between can't and won't. There's a difference between can't and won't. But listen, what has he gave you to be faithful over? Again, come into his house. Come into his house. And we, we say this all the time. Listen, where your car is, mm -hmm. when it's church time, that's where your testimony yeah, is. Yeah, true. Now, folks, I get it. There are people that are sick. I sure. get it. There are things that come up. But, sure. folks, there are people that when church time comes, their testimony, Mike, is in the driveway. Yeah, true. Amen. Or it's at the ball game. Yeah. Or it's right. at the That's store. Right. Or it's at the lake fishing. Or right. it's wherever. Folks, listen. Where your car is, that's where your testimony is. And, again, okay, that was a message for everybody. Okay, he's gave us all this same task to be faithful. Yes. Okay, Hebrews uh, ten twenty five, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Amen. Folks, if, if there was ever a time that we should be faithful, it's now, Harley. Amen. Listen, with every, with every day, you're that much closer to eternity. That's right. We're that much closer to judgment. Right. And, and if you can't be faithful over just coming to church, yeah. how is he going to trust you with something bigger than that? Amen. Now, amen, amen or out. I get it. Most of you here tonight don't have to hear this. The people that should be hearing this aren't here. But, folks, listen. If you can't even be faithful in that which is least, yeah. how is he going to give you more than that? But listen, there's expectations of the servants. One of those expectations, guess what? Mind my house. Mind my house. Be a witness. Be a testimony. Right. Well, God ain't gave me anything to do. Okay? Folks, if you're a parent, that's a lie. Yeah. Amen. 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 Didn't even have to prompt it there. No, no, no. <laughs> if you're a parent, guess what? He's gave you a responsibility. Yeah. Proverbs 22 6. 
Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's right. Folks, listen, there are people that have uh, cast aside that duty. Yeah, true. They've Amen. taken it for granted. They haven't taken it serious. Yeah. Okay? When he says train up a child in the way he should go, you know why? Because that child is on loan. Yeah, that's right. It's not yours. Amen. Amen. Yes. And Mike, there are those yeah. that they don't realize that. That's right. And some have had it taken away from them. Yeah. And guess what? You got to realize that's not yours. Mm -hmm. right. I've gave you that child, and I've gave you the responsibility of raising it up in the way that it should go. Yes. But there are those built. They they yeah. just turned aside and said, "Well, yeah, he'll he'll make it. <laughs> She'll make it." Folks, they're not going to make it, mm -hmm. and neither are you with that attitude. That's right. Amen. Listen, you're given a responsibility. You're given a responsibility. And there are those, again, you say, well, listen, <laughs> my kids are done way past that, and I get it. Okay. Guess what? You're still an example for others. That's right. Amen. Okay. Whether you're grandma or grandpa, whether you're yes. aunt or uncle, whether you're just somebody at church. Yeah. I always appreciated Ron and Betty. Because they were an example to my kids, Bill. Right. They usually sat right either behind us or beside us or whatever. And so the kids seen that every time they got to come to church, guess what? Ron and Betty was there, Becky. Okay. There are people that are watching. Yes. Amen. There yes. are people that are watching. Mm -hmm. That's right. And again, okay, you may have done had your kids and yeah. uh, uh, set them on their way, okay? But there are other people that are watching. That's right. Amen. There are other people that are watching. And, and Betty used to crack me up. <laughs> when they were little, Bill, we'd come to sunrise service, and she would say, why did you wake those kids up that early? <laughs> <laughs> to make sure you was here. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Yeah. But that was the thing, Sandy. They knew that Ron Betty was going to be here. <clears throat> Folks, listen, there are people that they know where you sit. Yeah. They know where you're supposed to be. And guess what? When you're not there, yes. they know that, you know what, something's up. That's right. Amen. Folks, I knew this when I was growing up, Bill. That's right. I could go and I could tell you, and we had... 150, 170 people going, man. And you know what? I could look and I, Becky, I knew so and so sit here and so and so sit there. And when they wasn't there, I noticed. Yeah. Now, folks, if I knew that when I was Lance's age, yeah. then guess what? They noticed that today. Sure. Sure. They noticed that today. But there are those that they, they've just shirked their responsibility. To train up a child in the way he should go. Listen, right. to train up a child in the way he should go, you probably ought to be bringing him to his house. Amen. Amen. There's no self-churching, folks. No. I know that we went through this with COVID, but, Bill, there's no such thing as self-churching. you got to bring him to God's house. Yes. Amen. Everybody in the Bible, when they talk about him growing up as young, you know what they talk about, Mike? They were took to God's house. That's right. Amen. What did Hannah do with Samuel? She not only took him to God's house, right. she left him there. That's right. <laughs> Said, listen, he's yours. That's right. That's exactly now I'll come and visit. Yes, and she did. I'll bring him a new coat every year. It's yes. the, but she took him to God's house, Harley. That's right, amen. People stop taking their kids to God's house. Mm -hmm. And then they wonder why we're in the state that we're in. Right. Listen, Amen. folks, when you stop doing your responsibility, you lose the right to argue. Yeah. You lose the right to whine. And there are people that are going through things now with their kids, with their grandkids, that, uh, Mary, it's their own fault. Yeah. That's right. Again, this whole hateful preacher coming out. Bless you more. It's Listen, true. folks, it's when it's your own fault, yeah. you lose the right to whine. Because guess what? He's gave you a responsibility. He's gave you a job to do. And when he comes back, he's going to call you yes. on that job. Amen. He called him on this job.
Two of these were ready, and one of them wasn't. Mm -hmm. Two of these were ready, and one of them wasn't. Folks, listen. If you're a faithful servant, you're ready for judgment. If you're a faithful yes. servant, you're ready for judgment. Amen. You ain't worried about uh, yes. the master coming back. Listen. That's right. If you go to work and you're constantly worried about the boss showing up, then you better look at the, the amount of effort you're putting into the yeah, job. That's right. Because you shouldn't be worried about the boss. So that's right. Amen. You're either ready or you're not. Amen. You're either doing your job or you're not. Yeah. But there are those that marry when the boss shows up, they just yeah. get all tense. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you getting tense if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing? That's right. Listen, folks, same thing with Christ. When the master comes back, you shouldn't be nervous. That's right. Amen. Amen. We should be confident. These first two, yeah. there was no nervousness in them. Right. Listen, Lord, here's what you gave. Here's what we did. The last one said, listen, I just put it in the ground. And there it is. So you can have it back. Sandy, that's so sad. People don't understand. That's what they're doing with Christianity. True. They they've took their Christianity, they put it in the ground and said, Lord, you can just have it back. Yeah, that's right. And then wonder why they're they're upset. Wonder why they have no joy. Wonder why they're not happy. Yeah. Let's suppose if the servant isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing, he's not going to be happy. That's right. Amen. He's not going to be happy. But those that are, are faithful, guess what? They're ready for judgment. Right. They're ready for judgment. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, around verse 6. Paul rightly said, For I am now ready to be offered, yes. and the time of my departure is at hand. Amen. That's right. I have fought a good fight. Amen. I have finished my course. Amen. I have kept the faith. Yes. Folks, listen. He said, I have uh, fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Yes. We all have a different course. That's right. Listen, all of the apostles didn't have the same course. Right. They didn't all die at the same time. That's right. The first one to, to, to have to give his life was James. Okay, he was beheaded. And uh, there are, are accounts of how the others came to, to, to give their life as martyrs. But John, again, we preached from Revelation this morning. Yeah. He outlasted them all, Sandy, because his job was, guess what? Yeah. I've got something left for you to write about. Mm -hmm. I've got something left for you to write about. But they were all ready. And there was no nervousness about giving their life for Christ. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen, if you're, if you're worried about if God came today, yeah. would he be pleased with me, then something's not right. Amen. Something's not right because guess what? The faithful servant, he's not worried. That's right. Because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing. But that's the difference between a faithful servant and an unfaithful servant. Yeah. The faithful servant fears God. Yeah. The unfaithful servant is afraid of God. Right. right. Now, folks, did you catch that? The faithful servant fears God. The unfaithful servant is afraid of God. He's afraid of the master coming back. That, that's what he says there. Mm -hmm. uh, in verse 24 and 25, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid. Yes, that's right. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Folks, listen, there are people that... Uh, Fear God, and there are people that are afraid of God. Yeah, right. And, and if you're not doing what He says, then guess what? You yeah. ought to be afraid. Yes. Amen. You ought to be very afraid. Amen. Okay. But to fear God, fear doesn't mean to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Fear means respect. That's right. Amen. To honor. Yes. To serve. Okay. And uh, Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen says, "Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter." Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Right. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. Mary, here's the thing. The master done knew what they had did with the talents that he gave. That's right. 
Folks, listen. God done knows what you've done with what he's gave you. Amen. And either you fear him because you, you uh, want to honor him and you respect that, or you're afraid of him. Right, right. There are those that are afraid of God's coming. And, and bless God, they ought to be afraid. Yep, true. Amen. They ought to be. You know why? Because you see how this ends? <laughs> Folks, this doesn't end well. No. If you're not faithful, it doesn't end well. He says, take the talent from him and give it to him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Amen. Folks, when the master come back and he found that there was one servant that didn't do what he was supposed to do, he didn't say, okay, you're free to go, Glenna. He said, cast. That's right. Not escort. <laughs> Pick him up, throw him out. That's right. Amen. Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. That's right. Folks, listen, you better be in the light while the light's available. Yes. Because my light's getting ready to go out on a lot of people. Yeah, that's right. To cast into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Folks, listen, when the master comes back, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> Either you've obeyed or you haven't. That's right. Either you've been faithful or you haven't. Either you took what he's gave you and you've made it fruitful yeah. or you've just let it rot. Right. You've just let it rot. This is a good Peggy story. Okay. <laughs> I have to preface all these now, okay? But Peggy will get on to us because we'll get fruit and we'll get bananas back in. We'll not eat them. Yeah. And you know what happens when you don't eat bananas, okay? Mm -hmm. They don't stay forever, all right? They're not like Twinkies that they have a shelf life of a thousand years or whatever. Folks, listen, that's the same thing with what Christ, he gives us stuff and guess what? You don't use it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to let it rot. That's right. And Bill, there are people yeah. that they've let their life rot. True. Amen. That's sad. Yes. Folks, isn't that sad? Something that could have been used, yeah. something that could have benefited others. That's right. And you just let it rot. And that's what that unprofitable servant did. He just let it rot. And then he was cast into outer darkness. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen, there's an expectation for each of the servants. That's right. Are we meeting that expectation tonight? Bill, get us a song. Folks, if you have a need, if you have a burden, we'd ask you to come. Page one. Rock of ages, plan for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from the wounded side which flood be of sin the double pure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow? Could my sin no anger know? Peace for sin cannot atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. While I draw this waiting breath. When my eyes shall close in death. When I rise to worlds unknown. And behold thee on thy throne. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. All right, all hearts and minds free. Uh, announcements, Wednesday night prayer meeting, children's church and youth groups, remember that. Uh, again, the Bible book for the month of June will be the book of Acts. About a chapter a day, you'll get through that. Uh, next Sunday, 
after the morning service, okay, will be the church picnic down at Coonskin. That'll be at the Riverside Pavilion. Okay, that's the one. You go to where the pond is, and it's right to the right, right after the pond. Okay, so there's signs. You all, you all see it. All right. But, uh, so after preaching, go home, get your food, bring you a covered dish, or go buy you a covered dish. Some people don't make any covered dishes anymore in Mary's. So, you know, that's all right. They got places they'll, they'll let you buy food. Can you imagine that? So somebody else can do cooking for you. But get what you bring. Come to the, come to the picnic. Have a good time. Uh, there won't be any service next Sunday night. Okay, we'll lay over service for Sunday night. So come out, enjoy the afternoon, enjoy the meal, enjoy the fellowship. Again, Bible school coming up in July, starting July 17th. So uh, be starting your, your prayer for that early. Any other announcements? Again, appreciate everybody being out tonight. Glenna, dismiss if you would.